some of you are familiar with the Network of Canadian History and Environments. Uh, it is a cluster grant with SHRP that has had funding in one form or another since about 2004, 2005. And because it's a cluster grant, this, these were sort of strange grants uh, that had one major and, and key stipulation, which is that you got a huge amount of money but weren't allowed to fund research at all. <laughs> so from the very beginning, from the very beginning, there was a focus on using the web, this is 2004, 2005, as a way, a way to build a network of environmental historians, historical geographers across Canada. You can see I've lost my ability to talk without PowerPoint slides. <laughs> Okay, so this is the first website, it's just a simple HTML website that Bilger Kell came up with. But with the uh, cluster grant, they promised to do something new, something that would uh, use Web 2.0 to sort of create this digital community, bring people across huge geographies, and all kinds of great things like tag clouds and <laughs> category clouds all over the place. It's sort of a perfect example of a way overdone Web 2.0. It, it looks like every other Web 2.0. Unfortunately, uh, Archive's Wayback Machine doesn't seem to uh, capture the Drupal content, so we don't actually have a screen capture of this original version. It, I did find the, the actual tag cloud. It's not in the right format. Um, but there was a lot of downsides. So a huge amount of effort and time, uh, mostly led by Bill Turkel, went into developing this website. And he found that uh, the people just didn't engage. It was really hard to draw executive members, young members, medium aged members uh, to this, this great platform to build. To build. And, and really, they got, he, he realizes now, he talks about this, he got too far ahead of the community. Uh, it was all about members coming on and creating content. And to do that, you had to learn basic HTML tagging. And the vast majority of the membership said, no way. <laughs> and then, even more frustratingly, five or 10 of us got really excited about the web and started asking, well, why can't we put Google Maps in there? Why can't we embed this feature? Why are there all these restrictions? So they had two sides of the community. Many saying, no way, we just want to send you a Word document, and put it on the web for us. And others harassing them about, why can't we host a, a WordPress install on the server? Uh, the last point, as Kim mentioned, this is the same presentation she saw. Uh, historians can't predict the future. Bill couldn't see at that point that WordPress is going to become much more than just a simple blogging platform. At that point, Drupal was really the only option for a more sort of full-service website. But now we've been spending huge amounts of money on the back end. Uh, you know, there's an employee I've met them once or twice that huge amounts of our grant goes to each year just to keep this website running. Uh, it, and we found it, it's just uh, way too much effort, especially as the grant is going to run out. We're, we're hoping to get another one, but in the meantime, it's going to be a few of us volunteering to keep this website running. So here's just one key example. We, uh, Adam Krumel created this video that showed you how to do that basic HTML tagging. She walked you through every step. It's got 17 views. I'm pretty sure three or four of those are myself. I imagine Adam and uh, Bill and Alan all watched it at some point. So count that up. Josh, the guy who's now working as the network coordinator, uh, there's a very good chance that zero members have ever watched it. So you can try, but uh, there's only so much effort. So one of the smartest things that Alan did was along with building all this web infrastructure, they put out three times a year a, a PDF uh, newsletter. It goes out over an email server. It brings a lot of the content that's been up on the web for months. And I know uh, one executive member that I've been working very close with for, for many years uh, prints it, reads it on the bus on the way home. So this actually sort of brought that website content to a format that uh, sort of crossed some generational boundaries. And, been really successful at, at keeping the network together. Um, some of the big success stories came from young members. Uh, Sean Karaj uh, just took it on his own initiative to start a, a uh, podcast, which is now in its 40th, I think, episode and has been hugely successful. 
Uh, well, I was working uh, as, as the network coordinator. We started a group blog, and this has sort of gotten a lot more people involved. And one of the key things I did was I asked people to write interesting stories, and they sent them to me as Word documents, and I uploaded the, and did the HTML tag and uploaded the images. And just by taking that one barrier down, we got a lot more, a lot more people involved in the website. Uh, a few more sort of major digital initiatives. One is this book series uh, where we managed to get the University of Calgary Press by adding some funding from our network to, to do an open access book series. And they've actually found, this is the first one that's been published, it still sold a, a huge number of paper copies, even though you can download all the articles uh, for free in PDF format. So it, uh, it's maybe proven that it's not such a threat to open access. Uh, one thing we quickly found is that the website was too restrictive and people just go on to wordpress.com and create their own websites. At first this is something we worried about, but now we realize we just link to them. We hope that they put our uh, niche logo somewhere on the site. It doesn't actually matter if some of the, the network's websites are hosted somewhere else and managed by somebody else. You put in a link, the branding is sort of continuous, it works great. Uh, we've had quite a bit of success in creating a Twitter community. This, this started uh, about two, two and a half years ago. We had a, a workshop like this. A lot of people couldn't make it. We used a hashtag. Most historians have never, a lot of Twitter accounts got started that week. But uh, this is something Bill Jekyll did, just sort of showing the network of, of the people who follow Niche. You can see this big cluster of, of people who are communicating with each other. Uh, um, so there's been this real sort of success in an environmental history community uh, communicating over Twitter, including uh, Finn and, and Wilco. Uh, a few more side projects I've kind of talked about graphic novels, Omika exhibits, a mobile application that really needs an update, uh, more side projects, and here we are to the prototype, which I actually have a live version of. So uh, the grant's running out, so in another year or so we decided to use some of the money while we had it to get off of uh, WordPress and, and just sort of update the look of it. So this should be launched uh, live in about three or four weeks. We're just finishing the back end. But it's going to be a WordPress site and uh, a little bit more dynamic, uh, more images. But uh, yeah, that's where the project's at right now. Thanks a lot.